with, with Dark Phoenix, you open up on a very intense car crash sequence. And I don't want to say too much, I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm curious if you could just talk about the decision to open the movie on such an intense scene. Well, you know, the the opening of this movie, I wanted to do a few things. One, I wanted to really um, declare that it's Gene's story. Um, I didn't want to start with Professor X. I didn't want to start with the X-Men. I really wanted to say this is Gene's story that you're going to be watching with the span of the movie. You're going to watch her evolution. You're going to watch her um, de-evolution um, uh, and then ultimately sort of even larger evolution into something beyond the X-Men, beyond being a mutant. So I really I wanted to start squarely with Gene. Um, and then I wanted to start with something really intense because for me, my vision for this film was to do the rawest, most intense X-Men movie we've ever done. Um, and so I just wanted the audience to know from the very beginning, this is not, you know, um, your sort of uh, maybe kind of broader, um, campier X-Men movie. This is like the real deal. Sure. You're going to be dealing with like really intense emotions, really intense action, really intense drama. Um, and that's all happens in the first, you know, two minutes of the movie. Right. And I'm curious if you could talk about the comics that you chose specifically. Mm -hmm. I know it's kind of an amalgamation of a lot of different, the cartoons as well, yeah. but I'm curious if you could talk about some of the influences, the, the titles you picked to pull from to inspire the story. I mean, I would say honestly that the the, the main influence, obviously, is, is Chris Claremont's original Dark Phoenix Saga. Um, some of the cartoons I looked at too, because I grew up watching the cartoons as I was as I was also growing up reading the comics. But um, like you say, I sort of brought together a lot of different influences, the different tellings of the Dark Phoenix saga, sure. with with Chris's original vision. I talked to Chris quite a bit um, in the process of making this movie and conceiving this movie. And for me, and when I talked to Chris about it, it really is about Gene getting infused with this cosmic force. It was really important to me that we get into the cosmic in this movie. Yeah. It's something that the X-Men do in many different comics. I even comics. felt some Avengers vs. X-Men vibes to it. <laughs> yeah. The Phoenix Maybe. Force was there too. Yeah, no, it's, it definitely, like, I wanted this to be a movie about the Phoenix Force and not sure. just about somebody who's, like, losing her mind. I wanted the audience to understand there is something intergalactic that's at yeah. play here. Uh, you, you also got away with, I guess you could say, a little bit more intense uh, action sequences than we're used to in comic book movies. Some language as well. Uh, I'm curious, you know, how do you kind of get the? Do you have to push for that? Uh, and and just to, how did you kind of come up with some of these Nightcrawler scenes, some of these Magneto sequences? Um, thanks. Uh, you know, because I've worked on these movies for a long time, and um, and we've been successful with the X Men movies, and and really the X Men movies have become sort of my family in the last 10, 15 years. I've spent more time on X Men sets than I have at home. Um, the studio has come to trust me um, in making these films. And when it came time and I said, listen, I really want to direct this movie and I had the real support of the cast to direct the movie, um, I, my vision for the film was a more intense, a more raw X-Men film than we'd done sure. before. And so I said, it was very clear with the studio from the beginning. I said, listen, this is going, this is going to push the envelope of the PG-13 X-Men movies that we've seen before. It's gonna be much more like the Dark Knight movies or like Logan mm -hmm. um, than it is gonna be like the previous X-Men films. And I felt like it was time for a change after 20 years of making these movies. And this particular story, I think, requires an intensity um, to tell properly. Sure, sure. And now my last question for you. Mm -hmm. Going forward, so many changes between Fox and Disney. Do you have any idea what the future might look like for the X-Men franchise? Are you looking to continue this? Do you have, has there been any conversations like that? I mean, the easy answer is no. I don't know the answer. Um, uh, and I, I don't know that, that Marvel or Disney knows the answer yet either. I think everybody's still figuring it out. I approached this movie even long before the, the Disney of it all. Three years ago, I started writing the script. I approached this movie as the culmination of 20 years of storytelling, you know, of living with the X-Men for all this time and, and watching this family come together. And, and this movie is the movie that challenges that family and tears them apart in a new way. And so I, I, I imagined it as the culmination, and I even pitched it to the studio as, this is the culmination of this cycle of X-Men stories, which there will be more X-Men movies in the future, no doubt. But this particular cycle with this cast, um, it felt like it was time um, to do kind of what Game of Thrones has done, what Endgame has done, really see them um, challenged in a new way um, and and sort of survive and go off into the sunset. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much. Yes, Congrats. Enjoy the next few weeks, man. Thanks.